Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, hope you're able to uh, accommodate yourself where you're at. I know it's a little crowded today, but do the best you can to. Sometimes, you know, there's maybe a couple in one chair, but we'll do our best to. Eventually, we might have to pray for another service because there's so many people here that we need to, uh, you know, uh, do what we can to accommodate everybody. So pray with us to see possibly we should open an, another English service after this one. But for right now, we'll do our best to uh, have everybody accommodated. Praise the Lord. Well, I wanted to talk with you for a few minutes. You are at Jesus' Love Christian Church here in the city of La Puente, California, at 15875 Amar Road in La Puente, California, 91744. Our phone number here is 626-379-8435. Again, 626-379-8435. So we welcome you and everyone that's coming in through uh, video right now too. We welcome you for watching us at this time in the city of La Puente. I wanted to touch on um, a topic here before you go on with uh, your family and have dinner and rest for the afternoon here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. I wanted to uh, share a little bit about important reasons uh, to live by faith. Important reasons to live by faith. We have some important reasons to live by faith. Amen. So I'm going to be going through a few scriptures and just illustrating some things for you. First of all, let's look at Hebrews 11.6 in the New Testament. So we're going to go quickly over there in this uh, wonderful uh, praise God. Happy hour. We call this Jesus is Love Christian Church happy hour time. Because you should be able to be here for an hour and leave happier than when you came in. Because the Word of God does that to us. It changes us. It helps us. So, I said Hebrews and we're going to 11.6 of Hebrews. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Luis Chacon. Amen. And I'm here. Thank you, Jesus. As a person that loves God. And God has uh, called me and ordained me to preach, teach, and lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus. So that's what I do for a living. It's a lifestyle. I love it. I, uh, you know, I continue daily walking by faith. And if I mess up, I also as a pastor ask God to forgive me uh, for what I do and continue on. I do not go back 10 years from now or 20 years from now. I start where I'm at. God forgives me and I keep going. Amen. So in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So one of the reasons to live by faith is because it is impossible to please God without faith. Where does faith come? It comes from Him. It comes by hearing His Word. We get the faith. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're on earth to please God, first of all, number one. Then He gives us the desires of our heart. But we must please God in everything we do. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrew, Hebrews 11.6 For the one who draws near to God must believe that God exists he exists and he rewards god rewards those who seek him praise god you must believe that he exists that he is and what he says he is and does he does it and he says it and he does it he is the god of gods many people follow different gods but you need to follow god god the one that spoke all this earth into being and heavens and and oceans and jungles and animals and all that kind of stuff. God spoke it and he's teaching us how to believe him and speak things into being. So uh, the reason why you and I must live by faith is because one of the scriptures says in Hebrews 11:6 6 that without his faith in us, we cannot please him. So we must please him by faith. Uh, why? Well, let's look at Ephesians 2.8. We're going to be looking at a few scriptures that have to deal with why all this faith. 
in Ephesians, New Testament, uh, 2a, praise the Lord, it says here, for by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not from yourself, it is God's gift. By grace are you saved through faith. God's gift of grace and faith got us into the family of God. Grace and faith got us into the family of God. Aren't you glad you're in the family of God? It's wonderful to be uh, 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 in the family of God. We have a big family around the world, not just in the United States. Around the world, we're a big family of God. Now, the just, the Bible says, should live by uh, faith. And let's look at, uh, let's look at Hebrews 10 around there. Let me see if that's the one I'm looking for. Um, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Praise you, Father. Hebrews 10, 38, I want to go to. But my righteous one will live by faith. Someone that's standing right with God. You that weren't able, and I, that weren't able to feel worthy enough to be in front of God. Now, by faith, we can enter into the Holy of Holies, the, the holy place, to be able to talk to God. That we are worthy because of the blood of Jesus. By grace and faith, we are worthy to stand as a right person, having asked for forgiveness and cleansed and, and, uh, and, and pure and, and able to go right to the presence of God and talk with Him. We can all do that now. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. It's whoever just lives by faith and love and gets into that presence quicker. So you must, it says here, but my righteous one, in other words, the just, will live by faith. But if he draws back, if he goes backwards, it says, my soul has no pleasure in him. So God is not pleased when we go backwards. So if you need to go backwards, just take a step back to make a, a, a good a good decision and keep take three steps forward. You need to come forward because you got the Lord on your side. Amen. Don't draw back. Uh, verse 39 of Hebrews 10 says, We are not those who draw back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and obtain life. We're not going to be destroyed. We come from destruction. We come from uh, all that hellish type of living. We come from addictions, bad habits. We come from sin. And now we're in the light. So I do not want to go backwards. And I know that you don't want to go backwards either. Right? I don't think you want to go backwards. That's not a good place for you. I don't like that place. I don't think you'll like it either. I like living in the light with Jesus. Because of grace and faith, we are in the light with Jesus Christ today. Praise God for that. So there's reasons to live by faith. Amen? It pleases God. It's grace and through faith that we're in with Him. It is our duty as the just. It is our duty as the right standing person. We were unjust before, now we're the just. We were bought with a price. Jesus gave blood for you and I so we can stand righteous before him and have a talk and tell our situations to him and understand that we can be forgiven and continue forward. Don't be uh, uh, pressed down by the devil and all his words. You must resist all those words by faith. And read your word, read your Bible, so you can speak scriptures, and that uh, throws the devil back. He does not come forward anymore unless if you stand with the scripture with the power of God in you. You and I have words, but the words of God are powerful, and that's what moves the devil back from our lives. So we must speak the Bible to him that way. First, us, because we gotta believe it. We don't want to just pass information. We want to live it and know that it works. It's for real, you know. The victory through the word of God. Now in uh, 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. We're talking about re reasons to live by faith. Why must I live by faith? Why is faith so important? You know? Why do we please God by faith? So this is some reasons we're talking about it right now. And I said 2 Corinthians. New Testament. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's go to um, 6 and 7. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Therefore, though we are always confident and know, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. I just wanted to make sure that thing is working there. Second Corinthians chapter 5. We are dealing with reasons to live by faith. There's a lot of reasons why we need to move and live in faith. Number one, it pleases God. Bottom line. You got to please God first before your wife, your husband, your children, your money, your job. God must be pleased with his spirit in you. You must show God that he didn't make a mistake. You didn't make a mistake, Lord. You got the right person. I'm going to praise you and I'm going to worship you with my life. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 5, 6 and 7 says, Therefore, though we are always confident and know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Sight is one of our physical senses. We walk by God's faith that He's given us, not by the five physical senses, the emotional realm. We don't walk by that. We first walk by faith. We have to use our five physical senses for this earth, but we must please God with His faith in us. Amen? Praise the Lord. And... There's going to be, um, you know, some fighting that needs to be done on earth. But again, it's not our fight. God is with us. So let's go to 1 Timothy 6.12. And let's see what it says about fighting. Amen? Because some people can fight good, I'm pretty sure. There's always a tougher guy than you, you know. If you're crazy, there's going to be someone crazier. But that's not the type of physical violence he's talking about. In 1 Timothy, New Testament, chapter 6, verse 12, it says, Fight the good fight of, for the faith. Fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and have made a good confession before many witnesses. Hallelujah. Many people are, out, are checking you out. Because we've done some talking that I've changed. I don't do that anymore. I go to church now. You know, I don't have those habits, those addictions. So many people are going to say, is that real? Is did he or did she really change? So people are going to be watching you all the time. So if you're going to do any fighting, don't fight people. Fight the good fight for the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called having made a good confession before many witnesses. So make sure that you back up your testimony. If you be talking about something, don't be, don't be a hypocrite. Don't tell lies. Be honest. If that's your testimony, stand on your testimony. And don't let nobody discourage you from your testimony. Fight the good fight of faith. And in 1 John, let's go to 1 John. And let's look at uh, chapter 5. Verse 4. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says here, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 1 John 5 4, it says, Whatever has been born of God conquers the world. Whatever has been born of God conquers this system we live in. There's two systems. God's way of doing things and the world's way of doing things. So if you're born of God, you'll respect the law of the land. And you'll give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And you'll give to God what belongs to God. Amen? So, because whatever has been born of God conquers the world. This is the victory that has conquered the world. Our faith. It is with God's faith that is yours now and you're using it because when you were born again, a measure of faith came to you. And now that's got to grow inside of you. You're conquering the world. Addictions, bad habits. You're conquering all that stuff by uh, with the faith of God in you. And that pleases God. He, he gives us victory. That He has already conquered this world. But He's allowing us now to face it and use the way He conquered it. By speaking things either out or in or cancel or add it on. Believe in your heart. 
say with your mouth, and there's the manifestation. Believe in your heart, say with your mouth, and there's the manifestation. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, in uh, 2 Corinthians, back there to 2 Corinthians, and we're looking at, let's see, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. And let's take you to 2 Corinthians. And let's see where I want to take you here. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You 2 Corinthians there? Okay. 2 Corinthians. I'm almost there. I'm looking for it. Hallelujah. By faith we stand. That's the one I'm looking for in 2 Corinthians. That if you're going to do any standing, you're going to stand up for faith. By faith we stand. In other words, I may be knocked down, but I'm going to stand again by faith. Trusting God and His promises that are yes and amen. I will stand for faith. Hallelujah. And then in Ephesians, we go, now we're going through a few scriptures here because we're dealing with uh, reasons to live by faith. In Ephesians chapter 6, praise God, we're going to look at the armor of God. You know, in the armor of God, there, uh, the Christian warfare, uh, it says in 610, finally be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. It says there, 11, 611 of Ephesians, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil, against the threats of the devil. Because sometimes the devil comes and you may not even know he's there, but you get scared and you fear and you draw back and you don't please God if you draw back. You got to keep going forward, fighting the good fight of faith. So you can stand against the tricks of the devil. You got to put on the full armor of God like a soldier. Roman soldiers used to get dressed up. For our battles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day. And having prepared everything, stand therefore. When you're ready, you're supposed to stay standing. Continue to stand. Don't just take the armor off and relax. Stand, therefore, with truth like a belt around your waist. Righteousness like armor on your chest. Verse 15, your feet sandal with readiness of the gospel of peace. 16, in every situation, taking the shield of faith, it says there. And with it, you'll be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. So the shield of faith is like a fire extinguisher. You know what I mean? An arrow, something that comes against you. The devil wants to lie, wants to make you sad, wants to bring fear, wants to scare you. Then you put the shield of faith up and it's like, shh, squirt the sayings of the devil and they don't hurt you because you squirted them. You blocked them with fire, spiritual fire extinguisher, which is the shield of faith. Praise God. So, uh, Ephesians 6 talks about a shield of faith, which is like a spiritual fire extinguisher. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And 17 says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And with every prayer and request, pray at all times in the Spirit and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all the Christians. So we're in warfare. We're supposed to be like soldiers for Christ. Amen. We're supposed to win daily. The word of God must get inside of us so we can get closer to God and win in this devilish earth. Because there's a lot of demonic forces that want to come and destroy people and kill them before the time, before they're supposed to go. We have 120 minimum years here on this earth. So let's try to live as long as we can. Amen. Praise God. Now in Mark 11:22. In the New Testament, let's go to Mark. Praise the Lord. And we go to chapter 11. We're doing good with time in this hour of power here. 
this happy hour. Welcome to this happy hour in La Puente. Praise the name of the Lord. Mark 11, 22 says, Jesus says here, I assure you, if anyone says to this mountain, praise God, that includes me. How about you? It includes you too, right? Anyone says to this mountain, be lifted up from here and thrown into the ocean, thrown into the sea. And if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you say will happen, it will be done for you. Wow, that is awesome. That's the lifestyle of faith. See, praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. So by faith, you can have everything you say. By faith. In, in 23, it says, uh, well, we just read that. Praise God. That's the first fundamental of faith. That's what the fundamentals, the foundation of faith is all about. What I just mentioned in Mark 11, 23. Anyone, you're all welcome. Anyone. Just remember that you're, you're supporting, you're backing up the Lord. You're standing up for Christ. So you don't have to be like an important person, a king. You can be part of anyone. Anyone says to this mountain, to this problem, to this harassing thing in your life, to this bill that won't go away. Be lifted up. Get out of here. Throw yourself in the sea. But you don't doubt in your heart. Make sure that you are full of faith and you're, you're believing what you're saying. It says here, but you believe what you say, that it will happen, then it will be done for you. Those are just steps, you know, and reasons to live by faith. Because God promises some things for the people that are full of faith. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now, you must believe you receive. 1124. Therefore, I tell you all the things you pray and ask for. Believe that you have received them and you will have them. Believe. You can't go by, well, I don't see it yet. But I don't touch it yet. But I don't feel it yet. But I don't hear it. Don't go by the five physical senses. This is a faith uh, adventure. A faith adventure. All the things you pray and ask for, believe that you have received them already and you will have them. You must practice that. Trusting God that He is a God of faith and He has given you the measure of faith. And as you practice His principles, your measure of faith becomes giant faith. Amen? Now, verse 25. Whenever you stand praying, this is very important. For the walk of faith. If you're praying and believing for things. It says whenever you stand praying. If you have anything against anyone. If someone has done you wrong. If someone has gossiped on you. If someone has, has really ridiculed you. You know made a clown out of you. You know laughed his way all around. Because of your name or what you did. And you know who it is. And you felt that shame or whatever. If anyone. It says here has done anything against you, lied about you, stole money from you, you know, hurt you, beat you, cussed you out. If anyone has done that, has done that. The Bible says here, by faith, forgive them. And then some people may say, oh, no, no, you don't know what I've gone through. Okay, I understand, but you don't know what I've gone through either. And I've practiced this and I've had to let go of it. So make sure that you forgive. If you're going to believe God in your heart and say with your mouth and receive it by faith, it won't happen if you have unforgiveness. So it's very important that you release any unforgiveness out of your life so that your Father in Heaven will forgive you of the things you do wrong. Make sure you release that person. Don't hold them in their captive. If you don't forgive, Neither will your Father in heaven forgive your doing wrongs, your wrongdoings. So make sure you always say, you know what? I don't want to. I don't like that person, but I forgive them. You got to forgive. You got to release that. Amen. Now, how do you forgive? By F-A-I-T-H. You forgive by faith. Knowing that things that God will back you up, knowing that you're gonna feel better, 
knowing that you're going to be healed if something was messing you up because of unforgiveness, you know, sleep better. By faith, you forgive. Just like life itself. As a Christian, you must live it by faith because that's going to please, number one, God. God has to be pleased, number one. Amen? We walk by faith, not by sight. Remember we read that, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 6, and 7. We don't walk by our five physical senses. We walk by faith. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Mark 5 to the left there. In Mark 5, 25, thank you, Jesus. It says here, a woman was suffering from bleeding 12 years. That's a long time, huh? 12 years of suffering, of bleeding in your body. She had endured much under many doctors. She had spent everything, all the money she had, and nothing was able to help her. On the contrary, did you know in 12 years she became worse? In verse uh, 27, she heard about Jesus, and she came behind him when he was walking the town one day, in the crowd, and she, and she touched his robe. Because she said to herself, if I can just touch his robes, I'll be made well. See, she didn't know, but she was acting in faith. She didn't know that, but that's what faith does. You believe something, you go after it, knowing that if you do, and that happens, you'll, you'll get your answer. And that's what she was doing, you know. And in 29, it says, Instantly when she touched the robe of Jesus, her flow of blood stopped. She stopped bleeding after 12 years. And she sensed in her body that she was healed, that she was cured of her affliction. You know that? At once also Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my robes? I felt something virtue come out of me. So this lady with the issue of blood was aware of the power going into her. Something went into her. She believed in Jesus. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you keep hearing the word of God, you know what? Faith arises in your life. And you'll be able to talk to problems, situations, uh, sicknesses, ailments, diseases, demonic forces, evil, you know, all that to cease, to stop in the name of Jesus. You'll be able to believe it in your heart, say it with your mouth, and see the manifestation just like Jesus showed us. Amen. Praise God. Now, uh, in 31, it says, His disciples said to him, you see the crowd pushing against you, and you say, who touched me, Master? So he was looking around to see who had done this, because it wasn't just a regular touch. It was a desperate, full of faith type of touch. Someone wanted change after 12 years. I heard this man talk. I heard about him, so I'm going to go after it. Wow, go after Jesus. Then the woman, knowing that what had happened to her, came with fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. It was I who touched you. And Jesus says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Has made you well. Go in peace. Be free from your affliction. Verse 34. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord did that. But it took somebody to step out of faith. Anyone that's dealing with an issue. If you come to the Lord, you're going to be saved. You're going to be born again. You're going to be healed. You're going to be delivered. You know that? You won't be the same anymore. You're going to have different, this power come into you. It's not a devil power. It's a God power that will change your whole life, your way of thinking. That, are one, that are, you will accept an invitation to church now. That you will go to church and say, I want to know more about what happened to me. You know? It took a miracle for you to get you into church. 
Well, praise God. If you took that miracle, use it. And let's get into church. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. So, we're talking here that uh, there are reasons to live by faith. This is very good reasons. Live by faith. Faith gets you answers. Faith gets you to come out of the boat, come out of the ship, and walk on water. When you are full of faith, man, you do things you normally wouldn't do if you didn't have faith. Because most people are controlled by their fears. They don't move in faith. They move in fear. And fear is a level of devil ground. And you don't want to be in the devil ground with, with fear. Then you're in his territory. Then he has possession over you. You know what I mean? You want to be able to be a God type of person. A God that is full of faith. And that's what pleases God. Faith in God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. And let's do maybe one more and then we'll finish right now. Uh, let's go to 2 Kings 4 8 and then we'll finish there with this part of the service. 2 Kings. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings and we're looking at 4 8. This is the widow's oil multiplied. Amen. 4 8 it says, uh, and then it goes into the Shunammite woman's hospitality. One day, Elisha, the prophet, went to Shunem, a prominent woman who lived there. Uh, she was a very important lady, probably with money, okay? Persuaded him to eat some food. So whenever he passed by, he stopped there to eat. She wanted to open his house for this prophet, you know? Um, glory to God. And they wanted to build him a room, you know, so he can always stop there and sleep and they respected his anointing as a prophet of God. So they did that for him. Now in verse 21, we'll jump down because there's a lot there. But in 21 it says, uh, first of all, let me explain that this Shunammite woman couldn't have a child. And her desire was to have a child. And because she built a room for the prophet, the prophet said, what can I do for you? And she said, oh, no, no, you don't need to do nothing. He goes, no, I want to do something for you. I want God to bless you. And she said, well... I don't have a child. I really would like a child. And he prophesied over her. He said, next year at this time, I, you will have a child. And she had a child. That's what the Lord prophesied through the prophet. And in verse 21, uh, it says right here, that the little child got sick and died. You know that? And it says here, she went up and laid, on, laid on him on the bed of the men of God shot him in and left where the men of God used to, the room where he would pray and everything. They left the little boy in there. She summoned her husband and said, please send me one of the servants or one of the donkeys so I can hurry to the men of God and then come back. So she took the little boy and left him dead in the room of the prophet while she went to go get the prophet. You know what I mean? So in verse uh, 23, uh, but why go to him today? In other words, why are you going to go to the preacher? It's not Sunday. See, some people think that Sunday is the only time for church. Some people live in a religious timing. That you go to church on Sunday, that's the only time you do things. You know what I mean? But right here it says that, Why go to him today? It's neither new moon or Sabbath. She replied, everything is all right. She didn't cry. She just said, I got to go to him because my son died and I want him to. No, she just said, everything is all right. I'll be back. Everything is all right. We need to learn something from that. You know? Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Hurry! Don't slow the pace for me. Un don't slow the pace for me unless I tell you. 24. 25. So she went out and went to, to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to his attending, uh, to his attendant, his name was Gehazi. That was the servant. Look, there's a Shunammite woman. Run out to meet her, Gehazi, and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your son all right? And she answered, everything is all right, tell him. See, she still didn't say, oh, hurry, tell him to come and pray for my son, he died. She just said, by faith, everything is all right. When there's problems, when there's emergencies, 
When there's situations going on in your life, you just have to push it out and say, everything is all right. Everything is fine. You don't talk the problem, you talk the solution in the walk of faith. And it says right here, when she came up to the man of God at the mountain, she, she held on to his feet. Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in severe anguish. And the Lord has hidden it from me. He hasn't told me. Praise the Lord. Then she said, did I ask my Lord for a son? Didn't I say, do not deceive me when you ask me if I wanted a son? So Elisha said to Gehazi, tuck your mantle under your belt. Take my staff with you and go. If you, if you meet anyone, don't stop to greet him. And if a man greets you, don't answer him. Then place my staff on the boy's face. He just told the servant, this is what I want you to do. Go to that house where the boy is and do this. You know? So the faith talk here is, all is well. Everything is all right. Even though inside, she was crying. She was full of anguish. She was hurting because her son died. But outside, you have to let people know, everything is all right. Things are well. God is in control. Things are changing. But you still pursue your destination. And you got to get to that man of God to talk to. And it's here. The boy's mother said to Elisha. As the Lord lives and as you yourself live. I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went ahead of them and placed the staff on the boy's face. But there was no sound or sign of life. So he went back to meet Elisha and told him. The boy didn't wake up. He told the prophet. The servant came back and told him that. Amen. When Elisha got, got to the house, he discovered the boy lying dead on his bed. The prophet went to see the boy. He found him dead in the room. So he went in, closed the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on top of the boy. He put his mouth to the mouth of the boy, his eye to the eye of the boy, his hand to the hand of the boy, while he bent down over him, the boy's flesh became warm and life came back from this little boy. Elisha got up, went into the house, paced back and forth. Then he went up and bent down over him again. The boy sneezed seven times. Shoo, 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 shoo. Seven times. He opened his eyes, this dead little boy. Elisha called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite woman. He called her and she came. Then Elisha said, pick up your son. Hallelujah. See, nobody said nothing negative. Nobody said the woman just kept saying faith talk. Everything is all right. She was crying inside. She was hurting inside. We can't avoid what we feel inside. We can't help it that we want to cry. We want to tell everybody that this is going on. It's bad. But outside... You got to show that devil and people that everything's all right. God is in control because I'm trusting God. That what you're seeing right now is me trusting God, man. not man, you know? So she held her cool and the prophet did what he had to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Elisha got up, verse 35. Thank you, Jesus. Went into the house and paced back and forth. Then he went up, bent down over him again. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite woman. He called her and she came. Then Elisha said, Pick up your son. She came, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. She picked up her son and left. She recognized God answered her prayer. She thanked the Lord by bowing down her life. Thank you, my Lord. And she went on. Sometimes we don't have to talk so much about this problem issue. We just got to believe God with faith. Amen. And that's why we're talking about reasons to live by faith. If you want to live by faith, you need to look at the life of our God. If you want to live by faith, you need to look at the life of Jesus. If you want to live by faith, you ought to look at the life of, you know, Joshua. You know, you ought to live, look at the life of Abraham. You know, the life of Moses. People that have lived by faith. People that have made mistakes. People that have had to repent. 
people that maybe didn't get into the promised land because of one mistake. God, he is very merciful. But days ago, he was very strict. Not everybody were given another opportunity after God gives in. God wasn't a father that said, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I'm going to spank you, I'm going to spank you. God said something, you didn't obey it, boom, you're gone. He was hard. So I thank God for the mercy he's showing us through his son Jesus today. You know what I mean? But faith walk is very important in our life. And there's reasons to live, talk, walk, sleep, get up, spend, work by faith. Amen? Praise God. So uh, today our Bibles are personal contact with God. Her contact was a prophet. Today our contact with God is the Bible. Everything's here. The nuggets, the anointing, everything that you need, the love, the faith, the forgiveness, the growth in your life, spiritual growth is right here. To recognize who you are, this is the mirror you must constantly look at every day to let everybody know. Amen. She believed what the man of God uh, told her the first time. And he told her, everything's going to be all right. You'll have a boy. And she believed all that, you know. Amen. Let's go ahead and stop right here. There's more that we can, uh, that we can do, but praise God. You know, in, in the walk of faith, just to close, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, like the Israelites, they lived in Egypt for 430 years. They thought that that was it. That was their life. But God still had more for them out of Egypt, you know. He sent a deliverer. And God is always sending somebody into your life to speak faith into your life, to speak love, to get you out of darkness, to, to show you how to live the right way. So pay attention when God sends people to you. I received someone from God, June 22nd, 1977, because of that card I picked up at the gym. I was an instructor and that guy I met, I called that man. That was the guy that was sent for me, for my deliverance. Hallelujah. You see, because he was a man of God. There is a man and a woman of God that's sent to you. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you're in a business, uh, uh, you know, your job, you're on vacation. You're, but somebody's going to connect with you and say, this is the way. Follow it to God. Connect with that person. And you're going to see that life of that person live it, not just talk it. So check out the testimony of people. They're for real. Follow God. Follow God. Let, let them lead you to God. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. Uh, Sometimes, I just want to let you know that there's nothing to see. What you're asking for and believing for, you can't see it. You know what I mean? And uh, you just have to obey it. God says the word. You may not see what you're waiting for or asking for, but you must obey through all that. And, and you're going to see a lot of good things after that. So, I just obey his word, in other words. Who are you going to obey? The word of God. And you're going to move by faith. Obey the word will help you in your faith walk when you do the moving. Like when you go through the waters, Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you go through the waters, you will not drown. That's a promise. You're not going to drown. When you go through the fire, you will not burn. That's a promise. It's happened before and it's going to happen again. That you're going to have an opportunity not to drown and not to burn. Because you know already that God has helped people like that already. But those people were committed to God. They were involved in God's business. So it's going to take you to be right with God. Amen. And please God. Thank you, Jesus. Just make sure that you have a grateful heart and you have a song of victory in your heart. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. We give you glory and honor. We thank you that it is important. It is important. The faith walk for the Christian. Amen. And that's why we're talking about there are reasons to live by faith. It's not just throw dice and see if we can make it. There are reasons for you and I to live by faith. First of all, because it pleases God and it helps us get over to the other side. I don't want to stay in the same place. I want to go to the other side. So if you're ready to go to the other side, then let's get born again. First of all, if you're not born again. So are you ready to receive Jesus? Repeat this after me. Say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe you sent Jesus to die for me, a sinner. I'm asking you today to forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me. I receive you, Lord. 
I make you my God. Show me a church. Let me read your Bible. Today I become born again. Thank you for the born again experience. To be right with God through his son Jesus. Be empowered to prosper. I call you healthy, wealthy, good looking Christian. Prospering through the word of God. Amen. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. Amen. If you need prayer coming up, we'll be right here for you. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus.